So I picked up this X230 on eBay for about $100. Rather than uh, some cosmetic issues like a broken corner, uh, it, well, seems to work and just needs a few modifications to bring it up to par. So one of the things we're going to be doing is the classic keyboard mod and we're going to be putting core boot, or actually the skulls uh, binary for core boot. So we're just going to see it boot up into Debian right now and a little display of the classic keyboard, but as you can see, it uh, boots up pretty quickly and I'm going to show you how I made this. But first, uh, I want to talk a little bit about why you would do the classic keyboard mod. So up here I have a X230 keyboard, which uh, is this kind of uh, chiclet uh, design and Overall, it's kind of an odd-feeling keyboard that also gets rid of the uh, classic uh, keyboard layout of the ThinkPad with the seven rows. So, we are going to get on first to the keyboard installation. Okay, so this is the X220 keyboard, and we're going to be doing some modifications to get it to work in the X230. So after removing the plastic from the front, you have to, well, take out the ribbon cable. So there's two screws in the back that you just simply have to undo. And after that, you should have access at the cable. You don't actually have to do any uh, physical modifications to the cable otherwise, except covering up some pins so it doesn't exactly uh, short. So I first tried this with electrical tape, and after installing it, it well, appeared to work, but the next thing you're going to have to do to actually uh, confirm your installation's working, or at least get the proper key maps, I heard you can just uh, remap everything in the operating system, is to make your own EC firmware. So there's this GitHub release for it, and it's uh, pretty much just something that generates the modded BIOS. So I uh, pretty much just... Uh, Stole some dependencies, uh, typed in make list laptops, and then made a patched uh, X230 image. Um, afterwards, you should be able to just uh, take the patch.x230.image and write it to a uh, USB flash drive with DD. So, just be careful it's the right drive. So anyways, though, after that, I was able to actually install the patched firmware. It's a uh, relatively simple process. You just insert the uh, USB drive and set it to boot off that. And uh, all I had to do was press enter for com to continue. And um, since Core Boot uses uh, it's just the BIOS, and this really just puts the EC firmware or the electronic controller firmware on it, I should be able to later put core boot on it and still have the modified uh, keyboard mapping. So when I first started it up, I had a small issue that actually some of the keys weren't functional. So I decided to attempt it again, but this time actually cut out the pins physically with a razor and then attached some double sided tape behind it. And then after doing that, I was able to test everything with uh, Zev, which essentially lets you just uh, press a key and see if you get a signal from it. And I tested every key on the thing, and after that, I knew it works. So, one other thing though you should uh, know is just the FN key uh, won't be recognized in, well, Zev, unless you're also hitting like one of the uh, function keys. So let's talk a little bit about how we're putting core boot on this. Because typically in a lot of my videos, I actually compile my own ROM, but the X230 has uh, some pre compiled ROMs available to you, and this will save some time and a little bit of a um, headache and troubleshooting. Although, most of the time now, it's relatively straightforward because a lot of the uh, configuration files uh, work are generally available and you can always read the documentation on those if you choose to compile your own ROM or you could uh, compile the Skulls uh, configuration yourself. But 
either way, uh, after you know that uh, now that solves is a uh, pre-compiled binary with the CBIOS payload for uh, the X230, we can actually get into some of the hardware you need. So this is essentially a RPI and a Pomona flash clip and also a CH341A. You're only going to need one programmer and a flash clip. So I went with the RPI over SSH. But first, you need to see if you haven't updated uh, enough BIOS and EC firmware. So there's actually a program included with the Spol's release that will actually tell you this. But you're going to have to edit the grub config to add a IOMEM equals uh, relaxed to the actual config um, erasure files, I guess. So. After exiting from here, let's actually talk a little bit about the files included. So, but as an aside, um, we're going to actually try running the uh, X230 Solves uh, script, which will tell us if it's uh, able to uh, have Solves installed. So. If it doesn't, you can always update the BIOS. Right now I'm on a X200S, so it shouldn't actually output anything meaningful, even if I have the right dependencies installed. But what's included in the ROM are the top images, which actually store the majority of the BIOS. I think the ME's on the bottom chip, but it has a uh, script for actually installing the or running flash ROM and onto your uh, X230, which makes it quite quick to actually flash the BIOS, so it'll save you a little bit of troubleshooting, and um, I think overall it would seem to be an okay looking or core boot BIOS, and it should have the ME removed, but uh, it does appear CBIOS is a little bit slower, but you have your top ROM, and you also have another script for the bottom ROM, but once you run those, you can actually start it up, and you will see a, well, CBIOS logo. And you can get to a little boot menu, and if you just leave it running, it'll boot up. So, let's get on to the next portion of our setup, which is really just um, cleaning it up, and I guess the conclusion to the video. Okay, so the thing is about getting uh, refurbished or used hardware off eBay, often a lot of resellers don't replace the thermal paste, which for some of these ThinkPads can mean higher temps and maybe even thermal throttling. So what I decided to do was open it up and take care of that as the first thing on my list. So the other thing is this modification either requires you to modify the keyboard or have a X220 um, plastic laying around, but I fortunately had one I could use for this. Uh, I didn't go with the one with the broken corners, but for this camera shot, you can tell there's some slight differences between the X220 lid on the bottom and the X230 lid on the top. Um, replacing the plastics only works on the X series for the X230 for this mod for the keyboard. So let's, uh, boot up into, uh, well, our new Linux installation and do a little bit of cleanup work on the case. So alcohol with a little bit of a rub with a magic eraser should uh, take out some of the blemishes, but unfortunately the Lenovo E was already coming off. So I guess in total that is uh, my video. Oh, I forgot one thing. Um, so, I will be doing the uh, Q&A video um, question answer thing, probably for my next upload. So, and I did buy a Dell 9010 Optiplex, so I'm not quite sure which one of those videos is going to come first, but I am trying to do a little bit more uploads. But anyways, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope you're having a good one, and stay safe. Peace.